So today we're looking at a drawing by Pier Francesco Foschi, a Florentine painter uh, who was active about 500 years ago, 1502 to 1567. That's a three-quarter view head, beautiful. Looks like it might be a silver point, but we're going to execute a copy in graphite today. I tried doing this during class the other day and was very disappointed with the results, so I'm going to work on it alone and try to save the recording to teach with later. I'm starting with my simplified cranium turned to one side. Um, remember that the jaw, the origin of the jaw is right in front of the ear hole, and you can feel that on yourself if you put your finger here and open and close your mouth. And so that's going to give us a good clue of where, of how much turn there is to the head. So the ear hole is about here. You'll notice there's not a whole lot of cranium behind the ear hole and a whole lot out in front of it. So that's where I'm getting this idea of how, how much of the cranium projects back. Uh, the next thing I want to study is the eye level and the slope of the eyes. You'll notice this head is Got a very slight tilt to one side. And we're going to check if the eyes are indeed centered on the head, which they seem to be. Uh, that's something we can always measure. But if we say the top of the cranium is up about here, I'd say the eyes are very close to being centered. And the center of the bridge of the nose here we can avoid a lot of major errors if we just sort of analyze how far over that is. So if we take this as our unit, one, two, three, four. It's about a quarter of the way across. And we can just sort of give ourselves a little line of symmetry um, at that point. So in the drawing we're going to be going slight slope down to the right. That was a little too much. Centered on the head. And still a little much there. And then we're going to look for a point about a quarter of the way across. And that's going to give us the location of the bridge of the nose, which we're going to sort of construct around that. Our other major proportions would be um, if we get the level for the brow ridge here, we're usually looking for the bottom of the nose to be about halfway between the brow ridge and the bottom of the chin. So this and this should be about the same, which they seem to be. So we're going to mark the brow ridge and find the center here. That's going to be the, the bottom of the nose. And anytime you're not sure, you can measure with your pencil like this. And we're usually looking for the mouth to be a third of the way between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin, which again it seems to be, so I can mark that placement like that. I can sort of suggest the direction the head is turned with this line of symmetry. 
And probably the smartest thing for me to do next would be to um, create a really quick shadow map so that I can get a sense of this form as a volume. So we're going to look for this shadow edge. to fall along here and move slightly to the left over the brow ridge and up onto the forehead like that. While I'm at it, I'm going to block in the neck from right behind the ear hole and from this roughly the center of the chin. And as I said, well, I know where the shadow along the edge of the nose is, like this. Try to follow along with me, even if this doesn't feel like it's making a lot of sense. Um, Sort of nailing down these big shadow shapes early on in the process is going to help us uh, start to see this as a volume sooner than we otherwise would be able to. So, um, as I always say, I'm left handed, so my first shading is going to follow this direction. Um, it looks like uh, Piero was right handed, so his is going the other direction doesn't really matter at this stage. We just want to throw in a couple big shadows and you can see that that instantly gives us the ability to look at this drawing as a volume instead of just an abstract arrangement of lines. So I'm going to just lighten up on some of my construction lines. And I'm go ahead and I know where the bottom of the nose is. I know the ear has to come in this pose. It comes down slightly below the bottom of the nose. And that kind of corresponds to that overall tilt of the head. So I'm going to block in my earlobe down here, Get my, tuck my ear into this shadow shape, and then I'm going to block in the headdress, whatever that is. zoom out a bit so we can see what's going on here. So remember the top of the cranium I marked a little bit above the top of the hair. So the hairline is a little lower than that. And then the hat starts a little above that. curves down to the, lands on top of the ear, and this headdress comes up, actually leaves the page here, but I just want to get a sense of the correct size relationship between the face and the relatively large head thing, whatever you want to call it. And 
and I'm fairly happy with this is the time to assess the overall proportions of the relationship between the head and the neck, the head and the hat. I'm even going to block in a little bit of the shoulders. This is the time in the drawing to try to get all the all this big stuff right. And when you feel like you can read the the turn of the head, the slight tilt of the head, the size of the hat, and the sense of the head as a volume, um, then it's time to move on to getting more specific. We've already determined where the bridge of the nose is. We measured that. And I can see even staying kind of zoomed out here. We have just a little hint of shadow around this eye. Um, in that eye socket. Not much though. And we're also going to treat the iris as a as a kind of rough shadow shape and just block it in like that. We're not outlining it. We haven't drawn the eyelid yet. Just throw a little dark in there. Remember, it has to be on this line that we measured for the eyes. So mine's probably a little higher than it should be. But to lower it, it's just a little smudge of dark. Now it feels like a little more where it should be. And I'm going to throw in this dark on the other side for the iris. And Notice I'm just using my first shading direction. And maybe just a hint of the shadow under this lid. And you see how we can, we're starting to be able to read the direction that her gaze is directed. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of the shadow detail around the tip of the nose. Start to get a sense of the turn of the nose. And a little bit of the darkening of the line between the lips. Notice it veers upward on the left. There's just a slight pocket of shadow at the corner of the mouth there and at the corner of the mouth over here. And a very slight touch of shadow under the bottom lip where we normally look for it. And for those of you who jump really fast into hard graphic outlines. Notice that our goal here is to create a legible drawing where we start to read the pose and we start to read the form without any of that. Because as soon as you commit to a detail, you're going to have a much harder time uh, making corrections to your drawing or even seeing what you need to correct. Because those details interfere with your ability to um, read the relationship between the features. So right now this is all we have is the relationship between the features and I can see for example like I feel like this this right iris is is pulling slightly to the right so I'm gonna just move it just a little to the left And your corrections are going to be different, but this is the time to make them. You want to just be happy with the drawing before you move on to the next step. Because what happens is when you your brain has two recognition systems, as you've heard me say before, 
the right brain is recognizing faces by perceiving the relationship among all the features. Uh, the left brain is also capable of facial recognition, but it does so by doing a top to bottom analysis of one feature at a time. And if you allow the left brain, if you give the left brain something to work on, um, your right brain's going to just tune it out. And you're not going to notice all the big relationship errors that you may have introduced into the drawing. So I'm still not 100% sure about this, but hopefully we can zoom in. And as we start to deal with the individual features, um, it'll make more sense. So we're going to go into this left eye. Um, beautiful fluid strokes here. We're going to try to mimic a little bit of his uh, line quality. Um, notice this key detail that the inside of the eyelid as the lid turns the corner there. And look at how carelessly this little iris is drawn. Just, but still beautiful sense of like depth and luminosity. Just barely touching it. And then the other key feature here that so many beginners miss is this little shelf of light that goes across the lower lid which he's bringing out just by throwing a little half tone right under it here and another little half tone here. And we're also seeing some shading here that really, whenever you can read the texture of the paper like that, it's a sign that the artist shaded with a, a dull instrument or with the side of the pencil. I'm going to use the side of my pencil here. I'm obviously not a fanatic about materials. Um, all my demos I just use a standard uh, number two school pencil. Um, you're not going to buy a pencil that's going to make you a better artist. So remember, that little mark goes away. That was the center of the bridge of the nose. Um, I always like to look for this relationship between the top of the ala, which I'm reading right here, and the inside of the eye socket. Always a much smaller distance than people think. So I'm going to raise the ala a little bit. And maybe even this nostril comes up a tiny bit. And look at the delicate little half tone right around the bottom of the ala there, barely, barely touching the paper. this little scoop of the tip of the nose down below the nostrils and then we lift back up with the nostril on this side and again shading with the side of the pencil to get some of these darks but look at the look at how wonderfully this shadow edge is handled where the this is always a tricky one because it's like it's a soft form where the side of the nose meets the bridge but it's not too soft so it, you need to 
maintain a little softness along that edge, but still show that the plane change is fairly abrupt right there. So. Um, and then this core shadow above this nostril is really key. And look at the amazing little hint of reflected light above that nostril. It's just like it's like barely there, but So I have to ask myself why my nose looks so clumsy and ugly compared to Piero's. I think I went a little hard on this this form. And I probably have this nostril just a little too wide. But it is tough, man, to do it close copy of a drawing this beautiful and, and get anything like the qualities that you that you see in the original. I'm kind of fine tuning this nostril. I, I think I lifted it about half a millimeter too high. Okay, well, when I get frustrated with an area, it's usually a good idea to just move away from it. So I'm going to zoom out a bit and take a look at that other eye. Um, this whole shadow area is pretty deep. And very soft. You can't you see you can't really read the shading direction inside this zone. But what you can read very beautifully is that reflected light striking the side there, and that's achieved by just going a, a just a little bit deeper along that edge again without without making it too sharp. Look how clear the structure is on the nose with the this little direction change. With the sort of ball form on the tip of the nose. And a little darkening on the top of the ala. But again, my I'm not doing it justice. So we're going to start to deal with this eye now. And I'm first I'm reading where I put this dark for the iris. I'm fairly happy with it, so I'm going to just try to build the eye around that. And here again, we've got this really simple, fluid motion creating the lash line and creating the crease above the eyelid. And a little dark around the iris. Look how simple this is. But look at how the, the depth of, of these eyes is incredible. A little highlight. be a 
little discouraging when I realize this this guy, someone who just had his first um, sort of one-man monograph show over the last 500 years, and most people have never heard of him. studied with Andrea del Sarto, so he was certainly well taught. But so here again we've got this little dark defining the lower lid. And having drawn this second eye, I'm feeling like a little, this other one is just a little small. So I'm just gonna, there's an interesting foreshortening going on here, like this eye is a little bit elliptical, even though it's it's meant to be looking at us, which is a little contradictory, but that definitely improved things. It's these nostrils that are really throwing me off. I think I'm just making them too a little too defined. Okay, ready or not, not ready. I'm going to let you watch me. redrawn this nose several times because that's how it goes sometimes. The placement's okay, but the, it's just I'm doing a, such a crude and ugly job of what's so delicate in the original. slightly better. So the philtrum is coming down from this tip of the nose. Again, very subtle. Like, look at how that little plane change is indicated. Barely there. Look at the restraint. The line between the lips here is like not incised into the paper at all the way I would tend to do like it's it's handled very loosely and gently like it's slightly out of focus which I think gives it a 
an impression of life, movement, it's not fixed. And there is that faint outline around the upper lip, which I'm always telling you not to do, but we're going to follow along and just barely hint at it. So that horrible nose, notice it looks a little better in context, you know, now that there's a mouth here. I probably shouldn't have let myself get hung up on it as long as I did. But. Okay, here we go. We're going to go down now to the bottom lip. Mostly blank. Um, I think there's a little more fullness, so I've got to move that shadow down. A hair. And a very slight outline around the margin of the lip on this side. And a slight half tone where the starting to turn away from the light. And a bare bare minimum of halftone around the other side. And it's it's nice to see how he was seeking this contour. So we've got the cheekbone down. There's this sweet kind of fullness around the mouth. And then we transition to the chin. So my students were having a hard time placing the chin. The thing you want to pay attention to is that if you imagine the center of this volume of the lower lip, it's a little behind the center of this volume of the upper lip, so it's going to be a little bit to the right of it. Um, this volume here, the tip of the nose, is even further to our left because it projects further. And then the chin is even further to the right because it recedes more. So the biggest error I was seeing in my students was sort of uh, just stacking these volumes one on top of the other, which beginners always tend to do. And that's going to really throw things off. So here's this beautiful little core shadow along the chin. dimple in the center of it and these kind of searching contour lines. And here I'm going to follow his line direction because it's so effective here and defining the volume of the neck. So even though I'm left-handed, I'm sh sloping my lines down, down to the left. And I want this to be a nice soft shadow edge, of course, because a very soft transition, much softer than the bridge of the nose. And along the cheek also, I'm going to follow his 
his lead here, even though this is not the shadow direction I would normally choose to create this softness because it would be simpler to do it this way by shading up into that edge. So this is sort of my normal procedure for this kind of a transition. But if you use a really light touch, you can you can get a soft edge shading a width the edge. It's, it's a little harder to do, but it's possible. And I really want you to think of shading as a kind of sculpting, like you're pushing and pulling volumes around when you shade. And if you let your brain sort of believe that you're doing that, um, you'll do a much better job and it'll be a lot easier than if you keep your brain on the two-dimensional surface. There's this beautiful little darkening inside of the eye socket here. There's this typical plane change. Still got this relatively clumsy nose, but we're not going to worry about it. I've kind of got her nostrils a little bit flared. Okay, let's back out again. For you, that might mean getting a little bit away from your drawing. See how it's reading from a distance. Still cleaning up construction lines. So from back here I can see I need to bring out this little pocket crease at the at the receding corner of the mouth. That's one thing. I need to go a little darker and softer along the core shadow of the chin and a little darker of the cast shadow under the chin. Those things together are going to bring out that very important reflected light under the, the jawline. And I'm going to start to deal with this braid, blocking it in first, curving it up to the hairline, and notice there's very little detail there. It's basically just uh, this shadow edge along the right the right side of the braid is what's giving you the texture of the hair. dark here with the hair right above the ear. And this braid sort of loops up. It looks like it tucks behind the ear. And again, just astonishingly beautiful details uh, that 
ear structure is so clear and it's just there's barely anything there so we're just gonna do the helix helix is flipping around inside out as it does in a three-quarter view look at that tragus very clear Antitragus barely there. Antihelix, nice clear shadow under the antihelix, and that's it. There's nothing else to it. Here's where that hair comes down. Behind the ear, very dark here again. And there's a combination of kind of tonal hatching followed by some directional contour lines that are showing us the texture of this thing and the way the form is moving. this little oval kind of crest. I feel like I need to come just a hair taller on this hat thing. And see what I did here? I just sort of pulled the part of the hair a little too far to the right. Apologies if you followed me on that. So here's the bridge of the nose. See, that's just a few degrees. So the hair is probably going to be more like here. And then this decoration is just a little more to the left but not much that's something I just didn't bother checking before got this little necklace to draw the shoulder is a little higher on the right than it is on the left because of the way she's her body is turned and we're not going to deal too much with the dress got this gauzy stuff this side and the question is how can I make her a little bit prettier
so we're going to give her just a little bit more size on the eye on this side. What I'm really reading in my drawing right now is that um, despite having measured it, I think the nose is just a little too long. And that's an important thing to fix. It's a very common error. elevate those eyebrows a tiny bit. So I'm working on fine-tuning things like expression right now. At this point I can really read all the forms in the drawing very uh, very clearly. Whether they're right or wrong, they're legible. And that allows me to see the errors and it feels, looking back and forth, that the main error is the, um, the mouth's a little wide and the nose is a little long. So let's see what happens if we attempt those corrections. And here I'm going to go one more time and nostril just a little higher. So if you are making the same correction and you're thinking, oh, I don't want to start over on the nose, that was a lot of work. Notice it's really, it's not a ton of work. It's like just taking a few lines and bumping them up a little higher. And now her nose looks much less bothersome to me anyway because it's like a millimeter shorter. Now this artist, if he was working in silver point, could not have made a correction like that, but we have erasers. So. And this corner of the mouth feels okay to me, but this other side of the mouth is like way too long, I think. So I'm just gonna, there's a funny asymmetry in the mouth because she's pulling this corner up and this side is more relaxed. And so, What we end up with is a mouth that's really almost symmetrical left to right, even though in this three-quarter view, as you know, it really shouldn't be. In this view, we should be seeing a lot more of this side, which is what I drew. But that sort of um, That's really threw me off. So part of me in the tutorial like this feels like, oh, you know, it's terrible that I 
have to make corrections. You know, you're following along with me, and now you've you made made the same mistake that I did in all likelihood. It's my fault. But this is these are lessons are really about trying to understand the drawing process and um, I make a lot of mistakes so if you want to understand what I do um, that's part of it so now I'm happier with the features and I'm feeling like the face is a little wide through here, which means the shadow edge. See, I've got too much light. Um, I always start out making faces too full and round, and then I have to progressively slim them down. So you see what happens when I pull this shadow in and get a little more of the angularity of this cheekbone. And I've got a little too much prominence, I think, to her forehead. So I'm going to pull this over a millimeter or two. And I can go a little darker above this eyelid. So I have an advantage here, which is that um, I can look up at my screen and see um, how my drawing looks from further away, because on the screen it's, it's not full size. Um, normally I would be drawing at an easel, and I'd be getting the same effect by just stepping back on a regular basis but in order to use my camera here it's a lot more convenient to draw on the table but that's why you see me looking up all the time is because um, when I look up I'm not only looking at the original on the left side of my screen but I'm looking at the my drawing as it progresses on the right side um, if you want the same effect, you have to move away from your drawing on a fairly regular basis. And there's just a slight hollowing under this cheekbone. Barely anything, and then... A slight fullness, as I said before, around the mouth. And the appreciation of the form in this drawing is just... The subtlety is really amazing. And the last step for me usually is what I'm doing now, which is sort of putting in some half tones. And the goal, as always, is to not let them compete with the shadows. We, we placed our shadows first, and then we want the half tones to be very, very subtle. 
so that they don't read as remember that in the half tone that's a place the light is reaching but it's not illuminating as brightly as the main lights So I still think my drawing's a little clunkier than the original, but I think you can see that that shift in the nose position made a big difference. Um, in a minute, I'll pause and I'll get you I'll show you the one I did in class yesterday that inspired me to come in on a Saturday and redo the lesson because it was really ugly Yeah, here it is. So, yeah, that was kind of humiliating. So, I'm much happier with this. Um, I feel like the last touches I want to make on it are a little more fullness on the headdress as it comes around to the right. Um, I really don't have time to do all the texture up here, but I'm gonna just show some of those folds. And then finally, I think it would help to uh, be a little more definite with the shadow edge on the neck. The cast shadow is a little sharper tone in the pit of the neck. And I guess that'll do it for today. So thanks as always for watching. Please well, I don't really care if you subscribe, but if you feel like it, go ahead. And if you are doing these drawings somewhere on the other side of the world and you want to uh, send them to me, for a feedback or to show anyone else what you're doing um, I welcome you to do that um, I think there's an email address associated with this YouTube account but if there isn't I will uh, try to post it for you okay thanks again for watching um, Talk to you next time.